Okay, there we go, fluid mechanics, and not an easy topic, but here at Gaussian Math, or at least for me, Danny, I'm gonna just talk enough about it so for you to understand at least what it is, or at least serve as a good re revision, or maybe it's even a foundation for those who are taking the modules at university. Now, the basis of fluid mechanics starts with this thing that we call viscosity. Okay, many of you would have know what viscosity is from your high school physics. Density and specific weight can be used to describe a certain liquid. So the density can be used to describe certain liquid, water, mercury or what. But as the liquid moves in a certain tunnel, there is an additional property where we need to use to describe the liquid to, say, to set apart those that stick to the walls, that they flow smoothly, that they are able to smoke into the small corners, or those that uh, get stuck as, the, as they flow through the tunnel. The density might be the same, but the property that we use to describe the phenomenon in which the way they act as they move towards a certain tunnel is called viscosity. And we're gonna properly define that term over here to the best that I can. Now, first let's consider, we don't we stick fluids at one side, we will just talk about solids first for a minute. I've got two plates over here like this, and I've got a material over here which is a solid. Okay? As I move the, and let's just say the solid is attached to the bottom plate. So if I were to move the top plate with a certain force P, there would be a, some sort of stress, stress, sorry, some sort of stress that develops inside between the plate and the solid over here. That would be given as tau area. That force would balance out the, the force P that I apply to the plate. In between the, the small little gaps, as you can see. This component over here is called the shearing stress. Okay, the shearing stress. However, we're not talking about solids, are we? We're talking about fluids. So we were to adapt this principle to that of fluid in order for us to define the term viscosity. And I'm gonna do that right now. So I got a plate over here drawn a bit bigger and two plates as a matter of fact. And now there's a fluid caught in between the plate. So things are a bit different now. I will still apply the same force over here, P. But in doing so, the plate at the top moves with a certain velocity u. Let's just say m, m to the uh, ms minus one to the minus one to, to show that u is the velocity. So the plate up there is moving with a certain velocity u in that direction. Okay, all so far so good. Upon closer inspection, you will notice, and also common sense will tell us that the fluid at the top over here, we would move, would somewhat move with the velocity of that plate. That I hope that makes sense. And there's the velocity u. You don't exactly move the plate and the fluid will just stick by itself. No, because the nature of fluid is that they, are, they will move whenever they will experience some sort of change in force. In this case, there's a change in force P. So if we were to consider a point B over here like that, when we apply the force P instantaneously and move the top plate with U, there will be a certain deformation. Let's just say a certain deformation that would move the top liquid in that direction. And let's just say the angle is small b. Okay, small b over here like that. So there will be a certain deformation like so. Now, on top of that, we can also suspect that there's gonna be a velocity gradient. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, let's just have a think about it because the fluid at the top here moves with a certain velocity. In this case, it's a velocity u. However, the fluid at the bottom here is not gonna move at that velocity. There's gonna be a velocity gradient. Or in other words, the different points in the, the fluid, they're gonna move at different speeds. What I can say is that there's gonna be a velocity gra gradient, okay, and let's just say the equation we put it as u in terms of y, where y is defined as this direction over here, like so. So the velocity gradient, like that, okay? So now let's tackle this issue over here, change in B. The change in B, small change in B, there's a term for it. That is called the shearing strain. Not to be confused with tau. Tau is the shearing stress. Okay, and the objective of today is to relate the shearing strain with the shearing stress, and we shall see that very soon. Now, using geometric properties, I will label this as a small change in A. Tangent, small change in B, is equals to the opposite tangent, so it's opposite, um, opposite and adjacent, so it's basically a small change in A divided by B. I hope we can see that B is the distance from here to here. So that for, for, forgive me for not labeling it. Okay, now what do we know? If we move in a velocity u, I can say, I can rewrite this that a is gonna be a small change in time multiplied by the velocity u. 
Does that make sense? And on top of that, since we're dealing with small changes, I can approximate the change in B simply as change in B like so. I hope that is all fair, nicely done. So this is the equation that we have. Again, I say, the plate, see, we want to find the, the velocity gradient, and hopefully in doing so, we can find the relationship between the shearing stress. So the point over here, when the plate moves, is going to move it to the point over here. And we want to find, we're just analyzing that using this equation over here like that. Okay. However, it doesn't really make sense to relate the shearing strain with the shearing stress right now. Why is that so? Because notice that the shearing stress is in terms of you and in terms of time. So what would be a better idea is that we would find the rates of shearing strain. Or another term for it is the rate of deformation. I, I personally like the, the, the rate of deformation because it really tells us how the liquid is deforming. You see, there's a change in the angle beta, change in the angle B due to a change in time. So basically the, the liquid is deforming. So what we can write is that we can write change in B divided by change, okay, let me get another pen, divided by change in T, okay, is equals to U divided by B, okay? Like so, and then what we can do is that the rate of shearing strain, we will define it as gamma with a dot on top is equals to the limit as change in T tends towards zero, okay? As change in T tends towards zero, that is what we have, and this would give us the velocity U divided by B, or if the velocity gradient is not linear, which may not be linear, we can write du dy. Okay, let's take a look at this. U, okay, the, I define the rate of the shearing stress or rate of deformation as the limit as delta t tends towards zero of the change in b divided by change in time. That makes sense because basically how this deforms is how the angle beta of angle b deforms like that due to the change in time. We can write this down as equals to u divided by b from this equation over here. However, u divided by b tells us the velocity gradient. Which may not be constant, which may not be a constant alpha. So we will rewrite that as du, du dy from the equation over here, the velocity equation over here, du dy. Now, almost done because the shearing stress can now be related to the rate of shearing, the rate of shearing strain or the rate of deformation. And by experimental results, it does in fact increase proportionally to the rate of deformation. And now we will introduce a constant like this and change this to the du dy to solve most equations, be it constant, velocity gradient or not. And this, my friends, this mu over here is called the viscosity of a liquid. And that is how we define it. Okay, some, some, really, some really conceptual stuff, but it all does make sense if you follow the argument throughout. This mu over here can be constant and can be non-constant. Now, I would like to do not confuse this with the mu. Mu is the viscosity. The du, du, the du dy is the velocity gradient. But right now, we are looking at mu, which is the viscosity. Now, if it's constant, you would see that if we were to plot du dy with tau, we will get a straight line. No surprise about that. Okay? These are called Newtonian fluids, where mu is a constant. Now, notice when I plot it like this, I will label this too as H2O at 60 Fahrenheit, let's just say, and H2O at let's just say 300 Fahrenheit. So the mu or the viscosity is highly dependent, highly dependent on temperature. The mu is highly dependent on temperature. Like experimental fact, H2O at different temperatures, it changes, the viscosity changes. Now what happens if I draw a graph which is not constant mu? Basically it can either go like this, it can go like this, or it can go like this. And this, my friends, is called non-Newtonian fluids. Okay? Let's look at this. Now, we can use, uh, we finish up the lesson by putting practical examples. Now, if mu is non-Newtonian, so basically it's not a constant, let's just say, let's look at this one over here. If there's a small change in the velocity gradient, okay, the tau increases immediately. Meaning to say that the fluid, it's very difficult for you to to move the fluid, and the term for that is called shear thickening. 
A common example of a sugar thickening liquid is corn flour mixed with water. As you try to move the liquid, the shearing stress increases dramatically. Remember, tau is mu, du, dy. So if you try to move your, your hand in a very fast rate, this viscosity would increase very high and that would attribute it to a large shearing stress. And that, that would explain why it's very difficult for you to remove your hand. A quick sense is another example. For the, the ones that go this way, okay, they are called shear thinning. So as you try to change the velocity gradient or if you try to move the liquid very fast, the shearing stress is, is low. Sorry, the viscosity is low, so that will lead to a low shearing stress. And an example of that is paint. You go try to paint a wall and the paint sticks to the wall. Okay, so there we go. Very conceptual stuff, but it's really to put a mathematical treatment to viscosity over here.